leadership, delegation, teaching that at a young age, because that also contributes obviously to the money making aspect of life as well. Being able to delegate and being able to start to uh, learn to lead without being necessarily a dictator. So um, one of his chores is to take out the trash every week, right? And so now he has he is, his eight-year-old sister helps him out with that. And so I want him to kind of guide that situation without him yelling at her, without them getting in a fight, which happens all the time, right? Because she's, she's yelling at him. So I'm trying to get them to work together and try to get him to communicate in a way to her that doesn't cause conflict, but, but able to work it, work it out and be able to do delegate roles as well as far as he's doing it. So I think that's important as well. We start well, teaching that at a young age. For sure. I mean, delegating is a, that's how you, you're teaching a leader, right? You're, Cause that's what leaders yep. do is they delegate. You can't do everything. And, and you and I both know, I mean, the sooner I could delegate anything, I, I, I definitely do that. Like right now I'm trying to, I'm trying to delegate the editing of all my, my uh, yeah. podcast yeah. stuff because I just don't like doing it, you know, but uh, it, right. when you delegate, typically that costs money. So um, yep. that's cool. So talk to me about, so, for you, I mean, from where you came from, now I want to go down the road a little bit of tradition, right? Because I think a lot of people across America are where they are just based on tradition. You know, we again, you and I have been all over this country, and the four different corners of this country are really, to me, four different planets uh, with, with the tradition yeah. of what people, how they act and think with their time and their money. Um, are you, So we, I think we all want to always do – better for our kids than what was for us at w- whatever level that may be right whether it was you grew up really in poverty or middle class or even wealthy it doesn't matter you always want to strive to do better so with tradition and you're building that now in your son so he'll never experience you know the life that you grew up in what other types of traditions do you think you're teaching your kids and they'll take as, as they become young adults well, I think I want to teach how to budget properly. That's what we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. But then also leadership. And I want them to start taking some of those leadership traits and aspects um, as they grow. So going back to the business, right? So what I'm kind of doing, what I'm doing right now to where when he turns 16 and he has the ability to drive, he'll be able to completely turn, um, he'll hand this entire little business, side business, side hustle off to him. Now, He'll be able to, because he's already been training. He's training right now. He doesn't realize what I'm doing. But when he turns 16, because there's enough profit there, hopefully still, to where then he can just hire it out. And then now he can reap the rewards of having other people and have his money making money at 16, 17 years old. So tradition-wise, right, that wasn't taught to me. Although my dad taught me great work. I mean, my dad was a plumber. And so I used to help my dad plumb at a young age. And so my dad did teach me a lot of these lessons, which I guess now that I'm talking about it, it's kind of what I'm doing here with him too. So very valuable lessons when it comes to hard work and, you know, really working. I, I think so. I mean, your kids obviously are all of our kids always see the type of work habit that your parents have, you know, and I think they try to emulate my kids all have extremely great work ethic. Um, they're great at, at, at their positions, what they do. And, and the more we can teach that, the better. Unfortunately, we know across America, there's a lot of sense, I think, when in the, in the poverty type level that you get so much assistance that it becomes, they think they're entitled, right? And I think guys yeah. like you and me, our parents, we saw them, you know, struggle at whatever times in life. And like, you just got to go out there and get after it. You got to go work and then you got to do the right things with your money. Yep. Do you agree? Yeah. And I think it starts, you know, especially if, or since we're on the topic of kind of what we're talking about, I think the sooner we can get our kids doing that and working and working past that anxiety and issues, like my eight year old, for example, if I have her do something, she'll throw a fit. Like she'll, but my six year old, she'll do whatever. She'll be, she'll be game to help with whatever. But my eight year old, for some reason, has, when it comes to picking up or doing something, it's, it's going to turn into a battle. So it's like being able to push her through that barrier to get her past that, to know it's like, listen, you got to work, you got to do something. You got to do, but that's okay. Because you know, when you have siblings like that, I have four kids, I'm one of four 
And there can be, there'll be a time when there's just a little um, sibling rivalry, like I can do more than you yeah. kind of thing on, on different levels, whether it's money, sports, food, whatever. I mean, you know, there's always that out there. And so the little, you know, the youngest one's always like, no, don't leave me behind kind of thing, you know, and and that's my youngest right. one. She's, I mean, her, the age gap between my youngest and my third is 11 years. So the, my first three kids are all adults while I was still raising the youngest one. But um, she just strived to be an adult at such a, an early age. Like I want to, I want to keep up with them, um, which is really cool. Um, another thing that I, that I see out there and, and you see it, we both saw it again, uh, talking with so many people is investing right i think a lot of people have the mindset on investing of i'll do that when i get money right instead yeah. of you know if, if you listen to like a warren buffett saying you know if you don't learn how to make money while you sleep you will work until you die period yeah. right and so Especially learning now, the, the, the lesson you taught your son on how to the the envelope one of it is for investing so that yeah. he'll grow up that's that's normal to him Right. And 10 years from now, it's normal for whatever he's out there making. A piece of it will go to investing as to we hear a lot of stories. Well, you know, we, we grew up in a poverty family. We didn't we couldn't invest. And you and I both know yeah. that that's not how it starts. Right. I mean, we have to learn how to pay ourselves first before we go pay yeah. our bills. Right. So yeah. elaborate some of the lessons that you learned um, once, you know, you uh, we're in the Marines, got out of the Marines about paying yourself first. Yeah, see, I learned the hard way. I mean, it took me a long time to figure that out. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is, first of all, right, um, is taxes and other obligations. I think that's what's nice about being an entrepreneur. It allows you to really pay yourself first. Um, a W-2 situation, the, you know, Uncle Sam's going to give, you're going to pay taxes before you see that. You may pay your medical before you see anything. It becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. I think what's nice about free enterprise is you can actually flip the script on that. So I'm not a, you know, I'm not a attorney or tax advisor or anything like that, but there's definitely certain things that you can do and certain tax professionals that you could reach out to when you're an entrepreneur, they can tell you. So going back to your question, it's what's nice is that there's different strategies that you can utilize when the money comes in to then put your money in places where your money can now make money, or you can go take that money to go invest in money and you pay yourself first, then you pay all your costs, all your expenses, right? And then taxes get paid. Exactly. Exactly. And, and like you said, it is, it can't, I think it's a mindset. If you believe if you're a W2 earner, which most people are that, well, yep. you know, they've already taken X, Y, Z. I already, I already put money in my 401k. And I think it's, right, right. it's well, yeah, that too. Yeah. You know, and I yep. think that for people's mindset that, oh yeah, no, I invest. I have a 401k, not understanding the, um, the reality of what the 401k was meant to be. And the 401k was never meant to be your total retirement. But I think it's a big misconception out there um, everywhere that the 401k, that is my retirement plan because you're going to fall short. If that's your, if that's your retirement plan, you're going to fall short, right? Um, and very few people can accumulate enough money in the 401k to retire from. Um, one of the stats I was just reading the other day Today, 2020 in America, um, to to be officially a retire to retire um, in America correctly, they say you need 2.4 million dollars, which would give you an annual revenue return off that money of 100,000 bucks, about an 8,000 dollar a month lifestyle, which is pretty darn good. That's a nice lifestyle, 8,000 a month. Would you agree? Yeah, especially if everything's paid off. Exactly, but the it would literally take a lifetime of a high earning individual. To reach 2.4 million bucks. Would you agree to that? 100%. But it's scary. And, and you know, I, you know why it gets scary because if all of your eggs are in that type of a that basket. You know, retirement mm -hmm. basket, some happens to the stock market, you're done. See, the pension days are gone for the most part. Very few pensions are out there where that would be people's, you know, break break fall or whatever, like, oh, I still got my pension. I'm going to get my pension. I'm going to stay here for 20, 30 years. I'm going to get my pension. We don't really see that too much anymore. And that's why employers went to the 401k. 
right? Not only is it more advantage, it's got their advantages for the business owner, but they don't assume all that risk for the long-term perspective of someone's life, like a pension would. Right. And that's why I like to teach in my, in my class, the tools that are available out there for us, right? I'm not a financial advisor. I'm in the middle of getting to be a certified financial coach, which just means, let me just show you the path and you, and you decide what you want to yeah. do, right? I'm not going to tell you yep. what to do with Make your money. Decision. I'm not that expert, but I think too many people out there don't understand the, uh, all the options and the tools that are available to us that we can use that all the wealthy people use, right? Um, like like not just an IRA but a Roth IRA right how to how to make tax free money later in life which is critical because we don't know what the future tax code is going to be all about heck if you want to really no. think about it this country's 30 trillion dollars in debt where do you think they're going to get all that money they're going to go to the yeah. people right they're going to tax us yeah. so anything that we can do to earn tax free money is great tax deferred i'm not a fan of but you you need to, to diversify and everybody out there that's why don't lean on one bucket of the 401k don't lean on that bucket cuz like brian said the economy you know it has its cycles up and down and depending on where you where when the cycle either goes up or down and how old you are we don't know eight um, a high percentage of people it was like 30 or 40% retirements got canceled they're like oh i can't, can't i can't retire now when 08 debacle happened i know you know and so right. here we are riding this big wave and everybody talking about you know we're due for another crash and you know there's a different set of opinions it is what it is um don't worry about it especially if you're young um you got to ride the wave that you got to be investing for the long term right um right so you and I both both learned those lessons. We know those lessons. What type of advice would you give? I don't know someone in their maybe late twenties, early thirties, if they're if they're like you know what this this whole job thing. I keep seeing all these young entrepreneurs making all this money online. Maybe I need to go down that yeah. road. What should somebody understand if they think they want to go down the entrepreneur path? Yeah. So I think right now more than ever. Um, this is for my personal experience is one is you have to be focused. It's very easy to get distracted and go off into so many directions or listen to too many people. And so one is to stay focused Two is to learn a skill, get really good at a skill set, specifically marketing sales, um, whatever it is that we're going to do, what is that skill set and what can you really master and spend a ton of time and energy focusing on that one skill set? So it kind of goes back into focus as well. And then lastly, surround yourself with people who have been where you're looking to go. So this way you can get mentorship and guidance from somebody who's already been and maybe has life lessons doing what it is that you're trying to do. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. If you want to watch the whole podcast episode, then go ahead and click right here. Okay. Um, do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you want to hit the notification bell, you hear you'll get notified every time we release a new video out for you, whether it's the clip or the whole podcast. So hope you get a lot of value and I'll see you guys on the next one.